In today's video, we're exploring some interesting geometry nodes modifiers and generators, which can help you do great things in a short period of time. These tools are built to simplify the modeling process and help you with staircase design, character rigging, and environment details. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's start with Staircase Generator, which is a geometry node setup that automates most of the manual work involved in building stairs. So instead of modeling each step individually, you just adjust a few sliders, in addition to step count, rise, run, and railings, and everything updates live in the viewport. If you define a step height or slope, it will even calculate the total number of steps for you, saving you a lot of time. And from what I can see, it comes with useful presets for typical stair styles, including a spiral staircase setup with radius and turn controls. And for more custom designs, you can tweak options like profiles, shapes, mono shrinkers, and UV layout features, such as stretch fix and rail trimming. However, there is one small caveat. It works best with quad-based geometry. So if you are using booleans or you have angons or triangles, I mean in your mesh, you will need to clean those up first. Also, on curved surfaces, expect a baluster on every vertex, so it will be better to keep your mesh simple and evenly spaced for the best results. And for outer door scenes, dual scatter can significantly improve performance when working with dense assets like grass, rocks, or debris. So rather than scattering thousands of tiny objects individually, it groups them into larger mesh blocks. This reduces the number of instances Blender has to process, which minimizes draw calls and prevents your viewport from lagging. It also includes camera calling, so anything outside of the frame is in process, making your scene even more efficient. And to add life to your scene, a procedural wind effect introduces subtle movement across scattered objects. Now, if you're working with character rigs, you will probably need Eye Corrector, which is a geometry nodes modifier designed to fix common issues around the eyes. From what I can see, it is particularly helpful for preventing eyelids from intersecting with eyeballs during animation. The modifier tracks the original distance between the eyeball and their surrounding eyelid vertices, ensuring they don't move too far, inward or outward, in an unnatural way. So you assign the affected areas through vertex groups, and the modifier handles the rest in real time. The tool also includes a bump feature for the cornea, adding subtle roundness to the eye without needing additional modeling. There is even an experimental option to reduce eyelid overlap, though this may require some tweaking to get the best result. Setting up also requires Blender 4.3 for the gizmo controls and a specific rig setup, and eyelids must be driven by bones, and the eyeballs should be parented. You will also want to place the modifier before the subdivision modifiers to avoid unwanted stretches. Once set up, eye corrector stabilizes the eye area, eliminating the need to sculpt or manually adjust deformations. For adding realistic clothing creases without a full cloth simulation, the folds modifier is probably what you will need. It is designed to give clothing a natural and a folded look. It uses two main components. The first calculates the tension map based on mesh deformation, while the second uses this map along with grayscale textures that you paint to displace the geometry and create folds. The result is a simple, non-simulated way to add realistic details to clothing. And generally, painting textures is intuitive. Lighter areas buff out and darker areas push in. The setup includes a live preview mode to help you adjust the effect and you can limit the influence with vertex groups. One thing to note is that your textures need to be set to non-color data in the shader editor, or you may get an intended results. Next, we're going to talk about the growing snowflake macro, which is a snowflake generator that offers customizability and animation options. You can tweak the seed to generate endless snowflake shapes and adjust the ground value to create a reveal animation as if the snowflake is forming in real time. The resolution and bold sliders control the complexity and thickness of the design, giving you control of how intricate the final result is. The micro is driven by a profile curve that you can swap out, allowing for endless variations. You can animate the growth slider from minus one to plus one, and you will have a snowflake that grows, which is suitable, say, for stylized intros 
educational videos, or maybe abstract animations. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the Europe-style random building generator, which focuses on generating traditional European-style buildings, those narrow, stacked houses with tiled roofs and varied windows. The setup is easy to use, model a base shape in the edit mode, and everything builds off that. The scale, slope, and form of the model will influence the final result. The tool lets you control block dimensions, the number of floors, window counts, randomness, and even surface damage, giving you a lot of flexibility. It uses separate seats for the structure and the details, so you can quickly experiment with different variations while keeping the same general shape. This add-on includes a set of built-in assets, which you can edit or fully replace, making this setup flexible for various architectural styles. As a bonus, it also comes with a stair generator that automatically handles step placement, saving you a lot of time. And there you have it, guys. If you are interested in these geometry node generators and modifiers, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.